Hello guys, <coughs> we'll be looking into the next topic which is about the bonding of the aircraft. Yes, I'm not well but then uh, because you got your ESA exam, so I'm doing this video. So hopefully we'll go through this video and you know, pass your ESA exam. I just came from the hospital with trips and all. <coughs> so this topic uh, is all about bonding, how you check for bonding, what is HIRF, what is uh, the loop testing, LRT, uh, loop resistance test. So we'll be looking into those aspects. So let's start off with the, what exactly happens when an aircraft flies. So I, I won't be looking at the uh, camera. So what happens when an aircraft flies? If an aircraft flies, uh, there is definitely some uh, static charge that will be developed. Now, with the static charge getting developed and the aircraft being made of different material, so the potential that would be developed would be different in different parts. And because of this difference in potential between different parts, the electrons could flow from a region of higher potential to a region of lower potential. And whenever that happens, it can lead to some spark. And if the spark happens, the aircraft can get damaged, there could be some corrosion, there could be radio interference. So this need to be resolved. So how this can be resolved? So this can be resolved if we prevent this accumulation of uh, static charges of different material and how can we do so? We can do so if we somehow have got some attachment, electrical attachment between two parts which are having different uh, electro potential series so that uh, you know there is no difference in potential and if there won't be any difference in potential so quite natural there won't be any you know this uh, uh, sudden flow of electrons because of this accumulation of static charge and this is how we can prevent this uh, damage and whatever it is so how this is done so this is done by bonding bonding to the earth sorry bonding to the earth potential so in summary what we can say if the potential difference is uh, uh, is, is uh, if we need to prevent building up of the potential difference in that case we need to do the bonding and if we carry out the bonding in that case uh, the malfunctioning of any aircraft parts equipments can be prevented it would also reduce any type of radio interference and it is it would minimize any type of damage that could happen to the aircraft or the aircraft structure and uh, it would also provide a low resistance path uh, for the electric current or the electric field or the electric path it would provide a uh, low resistance electric path <coughs> next we'll try to look into few definitions the first is what is primary conductor now the primary conductor is required uh, to carry lighting discharge current and then secondary conductor so if any other form of bonding in that case we use the secondary conductor whatever bonding material we use we need to ensure that the resistance should be less than 0 0.05 ohm. If the resistance value is less than 0 0.05 ohm, it is considered as satisfactory. Normal lightning protection is provided by the aircraft scale. Now for bonding, any type of non-metallic uh, parts, let's say the aircraft is made up of composite or any type of non-metallic part, and if you need to carry out bonding uh, of uh, 
a composite aircraft or any non metallic aircraft in that case that is being provided by the use of a cage now what is this cage now this cage it consists of some metallic conductor with a surge carrying capabilities so you need to remember this so it is being uh, the, the uh, static charge we prevent from building up in case of uh, non metallic or composite aircraft by the use of uh, the cage and this cage is actually some metallic conductor with surge carrying capabilities next how the static charge build up get discharged during landing so it get discharged via the uh, nose landing gear next is what is electrostatic discharge and how oh, what i mean to say is how electrostatic discharge is done so it is done by the use of special paint which provides the conductive coating next is uh, how static discharging happens so all this uh, static charge which are built that's need to be discharged to the atmosphere and they are discharged by the use of the static discharger which are attached to the trailing edge of the control surface now if you look at the uh, static discharger or the static wicks you can find that the area of the cross section of the wick is uh, very very less very small it's sharp the reason why it is very sharp is because discharging of static charge implies discharging of electrons now electrons has got specific amount of mass now since electron has got specific amount of mass so it occupies some space so if these electrons are allowed to move to the static discharger which is having minimum area so it cannot stay in that minimum area region and that is why it jumps off and the moment it jumps off so it ionizes the surrounding air and because it ionizes the surrounding air and that ionization result in some sort of a discharge which we call as the corona discharge now bonding connect connectors we have got two different type of bonding connectors one is solid bonding strips and another is the braided bonding cord braided bonding cord are mainly used for flexible part or for parts where we have got some vibration so moving parts or for parts which has got vibration and these are made up of copper alumino or aluminum now regarding the bonding procedures the detailed procedures is as prescribed in the aircraft maintenance manual or electrical standard and uh, practice uh, manual next we'll try to look into the bonding connection between some pipeline and the aircraft structure the bonding being done using the clamp so this is one of a situation we'll try to look into that so the first thing we need to do is clean the bonding contact area with appropriate solvent then there could be some paint because if i need to connect two part and if there is some paint in between so that paint would restrict uh, the proper connection so we need to remove that paint so remove that paint with using sandpaper make sure if you are using the sandpaper the uh, size will be 120 grit after that you know the sandpaper abrasive particles need to be removed with clean cloth and then install the connectors now whenever we are installing the connectors we also need to see do some sealing and you know this cleaning and everything so that means we don't want all this thing to go into other parts so only the part that we require and remaining all other part need to be masked off so masking tape in the surrounding area is a, is an essential so put masking tape in the area where you don't want the sealant or the you know the <coughs> uh, paint stripper or the sandpaper abrasive particles to go then you need to put 
uh, some primer to the connections and if uh, it is being applied properly it would be uh, you know, the finishing will be glossy and after that we need to apply the sealant well applying the sealant make sure you apply using the rotary motion another thing you need to keep in mind that the abraded area should always be larger than the uh, connectors and the uh, while the while you are cleaning make sure that you do not remove using uh, any unapproved uh, solvent and also whenever you are removing the you know or, or the stripping the paint or whatsoever make sure that you do not remove any traces of metal because there could be some metal and those are mainly used to provide a better conductivity so make sure that you do not remove uh, this while in the cleaning process the next topic is bonding inspection so first thing is you need to check for the quality of the bonding so you can connect disconnect and check for the quality of the bonding check for any sign of corrosion if some sort of corrosion is present that would be identified by the sealant not being adhered not being attached properly make sure that the sealing compound is not cracked and uh, the bonding is correctly installed the bonding <coughs> connect uh, connectors is uh, properly installed next is we need to check for the quality of the bonding cables so check for any missing cables check for any breakage check for any frame uh, check that it is free from any type of pulverization and how you are going to check it so take the cable and pinch it to check for uh, any sign of, uh, of, of pulverization then put all the cable <coughs> sorry pull all the cable uh, to check for uh, the proper connection next is we'll look into the bonding testing so if you're doing this uh, bonding testing so it is done using uh, the uh, instrument called bonding tester or milli ohmmeter so we'll be looking into each of these separately the first thing you need to keep in mind is the resistance value should be in the range of 0 to 0 0.00 sorry 0 to 0 0.01 ohm now we'll look into bonding tester first so the range of the bonding tester is 0 to 0 0.01 ohm and it works on the principle of ratio meter so what is the principle of ratio meter it works in the principle of that the, the current flowing through the two moving coil and whatever the ratio is that particular ratio is being used to deflect the pointer so the principle of the ratio meter is it uh, or it is the ratio of the current flowing through the two moving coil which ultimately is making the pointer to move next is the scale graduation is marked in terms of 0 0.002 ohm and the connector use are in the form of a plug and socket for quick installation and removal and also for you know, non reversible action it has got two probes and there is a reason for it so why we got two probes because it would act as a switch to stop the current flow when the tester is not operating and why it is essential it would prevent the accidental drainage of the alkaline battery okay next is the operating procedure so initially we'll put uh, the uh, lead B which has got single spike uh, and uh, that would be put across lead A which got double spike now the pointer gives the uh, test lead resistance value so this need to be subtracted from the test result 
so the purpose of putting this uh, lead a to lead b lead uh, sorry uh, lead b to lead a lead b got single spike lead a got uh, double spike so whenever we are putting it the pointer would give the test lead resistance and this particular resistance value you need to subtract from the test result and if the bonding is correct in that case the, uh, the result will be zero and whenever you are doing the or checking for this uh, connection uh, the bonding uh, resistance using the bonding tester make sure that uh, you connect the b lead first this is very very essential and why is it so because that would prevent the accidental damage to the meter so that's all about uh, uh, the uh, bonding tester so next we'll look into milliometer milliometer the principle of operation is different from that of the ohmmeter so how it operates so there is an internal supply in the meter which provides the current or which creates the current and that current passes through the test lead connection and also to the device under test and in doing so it would create a voltage drop and this voltage drop is actually measured so what exactly this voltage drop is measuring it is measuring the voltage drop across the load under test across across any type of internal connectors and uh, also to the uh, some current source resistance so these are unnecessary things we don't want all these uh, unnecessary things what we exactly want is the uh, voltage drop across the device under test but what we end up getting is apart from this we end up getting few other things as well so for more accurate reading using milli ohm meter we use a technique which we call as the four wire method or kelvin system now what is it the current source and the voltmeter are connected using separate source and now the question is how is it accurate how it is accurate so it only measure the voltage drop and the resistance of the device under test so all other factors are excluded Now we'll try to look at the situation where we need to use bonding tester and where we need to use uh, milli ohm te uh, tester. So bonding test, if we need to measure bonding between two extremists of the aircraft, in that case we use the bonding tester. The lead B is connected to the approved earth source and uh, the lead A is connected at the specific location where you need to carry out the measurement and the resistance value you get should be in accordance with the uh, aircraft maintenance map and for any local bonding testing we can use either the bonding tester or the milli ohm uh, tester sometimes while making the connections as i mentioned previously that you need to remove the paint and the so if if you are required to remove the paint in that case make sure that once your you know reading is carried out once you are done with your measurement you redo the the touch up the paint and the whatever it is we'll look into the uh, next topic what uh, is uh, hirf hirf stands for high intensity radiated field so what exactly is this field these are some electromagnetic field waves which are generated by the radio, radar, television or any type of uh, airborne equipment which has got the RF transmitter. The effect, HIRF effect is similar to that of the lightning strike. It induces voltage and can affect the operation of the aircraft uh, instruments, systems 
and to prevent it we use primary and secondary conductor the, it, the primary and the secondary conductor would provide a path of uh, low resistance to the earth to allow dissipation of any induced voltage into the sensitive circuit metallic shielding of individual cables or wires is essential and to allow for extra protection the entire wire bundle or the oil loom can be further encased with metallic braid next is how to inspect the hrf sorry hirf so to inspect the hirf we use a method which is called non intrusive method so what is non intrusive method basically it is visual uh, 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 examination so visual in examination by using some light or any other forms always remember that any type of disconnection you know, disconnecting during hirf inspection or you know the non intrusive uh, inspection is not permitted next is we we'll look into bonded joint connection test so this is done as per the aircraft maintenance manual and it is done by using either the milli ohm meter or the bonding tester the next topic we we'll look into is loop resistance test which in short we call as lrt now the thing is when do we use if the intrusion method is not sufficient because as if you recall just now i told with the intrusion method we are not permit uh, for disconnection so if that is the case and uh, with the intrusion method we are not very you know sure about the uh, test result in that case you can go for the lrt so it is mainly used to test the uh, shielded wiring now lrt got four components one is the drive current coupler another is the sense current coupler then we have got some joint probes and then the uh, the, the instrument that includes the battery processor and the uh, led display it can operate continuously for 8 hours and uh, it has got this pipe principle built in test equipment principle it has got two selection switches and the panel is led the mode of operation is on off uh, and uh, we don't call it on rather we call it run so off run and charge and two module loop and joint so we we'll look into the procedure so the procedure is uh, ac voltage is induced by the uh, drive uh, coupler into the shield wiring now this induced uh, voltage acts against the loop impedance and because of it <coughs> <coughs> there is the current flow now this current flow is proportional to the uh, the uh, impedance and it is detected by the uh, sensor coupler and this tester measure the current it measure the voltage and it also measure the current uh, phase relationship and because it is measuring the uh, impedance so that implies that it is measuring the reactive as well as the resistive the reactive is subtracted from the result and what we end up getting is the resistive next is we we'll look into lr joint probe test when it is used when the 
the loop resistance goes beyond its limit in that case we go for the LR join prop test or loop resistance join prop test and uh, how it is done so to do it we connect two join probes across the connections within the wiring installation loop and one of the joint probe induces the EMF uh, whereas the other joint probe induces current within the loop and the last topic is the bonding in case of the fuel tank so if you need to carry out any bonding test of the uh, fuel tank <coughs> make sure that uh, uh, you use the approved meter as specified in the aircraft maintenance manual and it must be explosion proof it is very essential it must be explosion proof so that's all about this topic and we'll look into the next topic in the following video thank you bye bye